Hello and welcome to the business meeting. As a member of your society, you have the right to participate in your organization, make motions, debate, and vote on those proposals. This video explains the basic procedures used at the business meeting. Business meetings are a form of deliberative assembly, and they're governed by parliamentary procedure, a series of rules designed to protect rights. Those rights include the rights of the members as a whole, including absentees, the rights of the majority, particularly strong majorities of more than two-thirds, minorities, especially strong minorities of more than one-third, and of individuals. Balancing these rights means that while the procedure overall is fair, you may not always get what you personally wanted. The procedures of the society are codified in a series of rules. And these rules include the organization's constitution, sometimes called bylaws. The organization's standing rules, sometimes called special rules of order. And in all cases not covered by those, the parliamentary authority, which in this case is Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised. Some basic principles of parliamentary procedure are one subject at a time, one speaker at a time, and take turns speaking. In order to speak, whether to debate a question, make a motion, or for any other purpose, you must be recognized by the chair. When no other member has the floor, you can seek recognition to speak by standing up. If you are unable to stand, make arrangements with the chair and head table staff and sit near the front of the room to make it easier for the chair to recognize you. If multiple members seek the floor at the same time, the chair will pick one of them and everyone else must sit down. The chair will recognize you by pointing to you, calling your name, or otherwise assigning you the floor. When you are speaking or making a motion, always address your remarks to the chair, even if your back is turned to the head table. You may not establish a prior claim to recognition by standing before the previous speaker has relinquished the floor. The only reason to stand when another speaker has the floor is to raise a point of order or a breach in the rules or to ask the speaker to yield for a question. The person speaking need not yield for that question because the time taken for your question and their answer comes out of that speaker's debate time, not the person asking the question. You may not interrupt a speaker to dispute their facts. Debate need not be factual. When you have finished speaking, step away from the microphone and allow other members to seek recognition. This is known as relinquishing the floor. Remember that debate time is limited, and in general, you only get to speak once to any question pending, unless nobody else wishes to speak and debate time is still available, in which case you get a second and final chance to speak to the question. Proposals that come before the meeting are known as main motions, usually constitutional amendments or resolutions. There are a number of procedural motions that can also be applied to these motions while they are pending. They include postpone indefinitely, which kills the motion for the duration of the current year's meeting, amend or change the motion in some way, refer to committee. The committee can be instructed to report back to the same year's meeting or to the following year's meeting. And while debate time is limited, the members may vote to shorten or lengthen the debate or to cut the debate off entirely using the motion for the previous question. There are other procedural motions and you may have been given a handout when you entered the meeting with a list of the most common procedural motions. There are three main methods of voting. 
The first is called unanimous consent. If nobody objects, whatever was proposed will be done. The way that you show that you do not object is to say nothing. If even one member objects, we will take a vote. The second method of voting is called an uncounted show of hands. In this case, the chair will say, all those in favor, raise your hands. The chair will then say, hands down, and then all those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. If the result of a show of hands is not conclusive, or if in any event the members call for a division, we use the third method of voting, a standing serpentine vote. In a serpentine vote, all of those people in favor of the motion stand up. Then, starting at the front of the room, the first person calls off one and sits down. Then the next person counts two, then the next person three, and so on, back and forth across the room as the members count off. As with being recognized by the chair, if you are unable to stand, make alternative arrangements with the head table for voting. And let the people know around you that you are voting, particularly when the vote gets to your location in a row. When the last person who wanted to vote in favor has counted off and sat down, the chair will call upon those opposed to stand, and the process will repeat. When the count is proceeding through the seats, everyone should help each other keep this count straight. When the count is complete, the chair will announce the results and the meeting will continue with the next item. Remember, there might be several motions that are stacked up and have to be resolved before we can continue to the next matter. If you have a question about what procedure to follow, Get the recognition of the chair and ask the question. This is known as a parliamentary inquiry. Those of us on the head table will do our best to answer the question or give you advice on what procedure to follow to accomplish what it is you are wanting to do. Thanks for listening and have a productive meeting.